I was really keen to take te reo, um, but my dad said it wouldn't give me, give me a job. His impression was that it would never be an advantage to us. Dad, Dad spoke Māori to his brothers and friends fluently in front of us, but not to us. I didn't grow up speaking te reo. They didn't really see it to be of great significance and of great importance. My parents were passionate about te reo. The one of the most important things about them was te reo. Uh, we grew up Pākehā, so the reo wasn't a big thing. Well, it was, it was never denied. It was never there. And I realised that he'd always generation that missed out on learning te reo because um, although his grandparents and his parents spoke te reo fluently they didn't pass it on to him. Our parents, my grandparents, they protected their children from harm by not speaking te reo to them. Teachers were not always in favour of, of supporting kids that want to learn Māori. My grandparents chose not to speak te reo to their children because they didn't want them harmed. We were strapped if we spoke Māori. having children and being able to practice speaking te reo every day to them that I have grasped the language. Well, I learned te reo alongside my babies in Kohanga Dad started, started learning te reo in his 60s and I started not long after that. You had to learn to speak it with your parents. That's how I learned, with my parents and my grandmother. I needed to learn myself how to speak te reo and do it with my son. All of my children went to Kohanga Reo. Um, I didn't. I was an 18-year-old mum and didn't know what to do in my daytime, so I took my baby to Kohanga Reo and I learned Reo with them. As a parent, I'm lucky enough that my partner's children are fluent. It's their first language. You know, we, we want, we want, we don't want it to die out. It's widely known that it's a lot easier for children to learn two languages at once, and so I wanted to take that opportunity. We can't blame the teachers. But really, the importance of the real, you've got to speak it all the time. I heard some great advice from different people over the years that even just using short sound bites and better than nothing. It enriches their lives. Yeah, and so that's what I wanted for them. I hope that as I head towards uh, getting older, that I'll engage more and more into it, and it won't be a skill that gets lost to my grandchildren. My biggest hope would be that every child who calls himself a New Zealander has the opportunity to learn te reo Māori. The hope is that it will get to the stage where, where it's, it's normalised, um, which is what we try to do at home. And those young ones, when you see them as young as they are, speaking to each other and uh, no problem. Sitting back with lots of mokopuna running around all speaking te reo, that would be it. And I think it would just do so many great things for our communities and for us as a nation. Me hoki atu tātou ki te reo Māori, hāpai te atu tātou reo, i roto i te kāinga, i roto i te kura, i roto i te akomanga, i ngā wāhi katoa te motu. We have to keep speaking. Our reo is our taonga. You're the fire that makes it happen. Mā ngā tamariki te reo i whakahoki a mai. Growling's always sound better in te reo. <laughs>